that's the first slide. Okay. Yes. Lovely. Shall I continue? Yes. Yes, go, go, go ahead. Uh, Tell us about yourself. Thank you continue. very much, uh, Master Guide Koto. Uh, yes, hello again, adventurers. Uh, once again, I welcome you all to this uh, E Award presentation. I hope you're all having a happy Sabbath day so far. Uh, yes, my name is Rona. I came from the Philippines, now living in the UK, and is a previ previous member of the Newcastle Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I've recently moved to the South Shields Church, where I'm serving at the moment at the Pathfinders Club. Um, so yes, that's just a very short introduction because we need to go on to the main points. So this is our first slide here. I'll be, I'll be sharing with you uh, the next slide, which will say the requirements of the STIN Can Fun E Award. Right, so just a quick summary of the Tin Can Fun Award. Mm -hmm. And I will get you to the details one by one as we go along. So dear adventurers, uh, please ask help uh, from your parents or from an adult to print out your worksheets online to print them out and then use your worksheets as you work through the requirements, okay? So on the screen is just a quick summary of the requirements of this e-award, but I'll be able to share that with you one by one right now. Are you all ready? Yes? yes. Okay, the lovely. Was, yes. Lovely, right? So the, here is question number one, okay? What is the earliest known use of tin can and how is it used today? Can I give a few seconds for you to make a comments on the screen? Okay, adventurers, that's the question. What's the earliest, you, uh, earliest known use of tin and how is it used today? So think of those and type it on as you answer. Straight away, the first one comes through, says, keep food. Marvelous. That's a very good answer. Yes. Anyone else would like to make comments? Yes. Yeah, so comments come through again, says store food. So it's all related to food and it's good to know. Okay, lovely. Let's move on. Oh, the, the, to there is a comment there says Japan. So it'll be interested to actually know, uh, 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 type a little bit more of that. Right. We'll soon uh, find out. <laughs> and another comment before you go ahead. And uh, it also says make phones, uh, question mark, and also alloys. Yes. Marvelous, marvelous. Keep it coming. Very good, very good answers. We have a comment on Facebook from Markets. Somebody said canning fruit. Yes. Marvelous. Yes. Very good answers. Yes. Any more? If there's no more, I'll proceed to to what it, what the earliest known use of tin can is and how is it used today. Right. So the, the, there is a very good comment which before you go ahead and I'll let you go ahead after that and all the way from United uh, Arab Emirates says used it 3500 BC in the city of Ur. So, right. Go ahead. That is marvelous. I think uh, the United Arab Emirates has just beaten me to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is the most, per well, the perfect answer, I would say. Can I just clap my hands for that? UAE, you, uh, you know exactly where you are. <laughs> right. So, yes, the, the earliest known use of tin was around 3500 BC, where the people of Ur, now Iraq made bronze articles. Bronze is an alloy of tin and copper. Today, tin can is used mainly in the production of tin plate, which is steel coated on both sides with an extremely thin film of tin. Tin cans are made of tin plate. This is the world map, and this is where Iraq is found. Okay, as you can see on your slide. Moving on to the next one. The next requirement of our Tin Can Fun E Award is you must keep a record of how many tin cans your family will use for the next week 
or the following week, okay? Write the recordings of how many tin cans the whole family uses for the whole week on your worksheet and submit this to your adventure leader to confirm that you have completed the recording, okay? okay. So I think that's quite clear. So that is your next requirement. We can move on to the next one. Okay, so the next question is, right? How, pardon me a minute here. I'm just gonna go back to that slide. How were things preserved in Jesus's day? Yes? Okay. Can someone make a comment on that? How were oh. things preserved on the time of Jesus? Any comments? Okay, adventurers, just uh, type it, type along. And how were things preserved on the time of Jesus in Jesus' days? Yes. So, uh, there, there is a question there that says, is the baked beans in a tin? Um, uh, using tin, um, uh, there's comments from uh, South Shields, the bailout from South Shields say salt um, as a preservation. And another comment for Maynard also says salt. Marvelous, South Shields Church, uh, e adventurers. That's very good answers. Any Anyone else would like to make a comment? Keep it coming. Using tin is another comment on there. Marvelous, yes. That's a very good answer. Any yeah. more or, or yeah. I, shall I move on? Yeah. Sea water, there's a comment there. So if you've chopped tomatoes, it's all, all the combination of uh, of those days and these days. Yeah. We also Lovely. have comments on Facebook. We have uh, from markets uh, saying drying. And then, uh, well, uh, also we have a, a Muta who said, Keep, keep them drying in sun, light, and salt. Mm -hmm. Lovely, jubbly. Yes, that sounds like a, a good answer. Yes. Right? Yeah, shall I go shall yeah, I go, go ahead? Yes? Go, go okay. Ahead. Right. So most of your answers were absolutely correct. Thank you very much for that. And I appreciate that. So yes, things were preserved by drying them out with salt. Right? Who answered salt? That is the, the right answer. Dried fish, as example, figs and other fruits were common. Today, most of the tin plate is used to coat the steel cans to give them an attractive appearance and protect the cans from rust. These cans are, packing, are for packing food and other items that would quickly spoil. So there's more, okay? The first example of preserving food in the time of Jesus, would you believe it, adventurers, is pickled okra, okay? I don't know if I can pronounce that right, but this, this thing on this photo here is an example of an okra. It's actually a vegetable and it's very, it's quite known in the Philippines. I wonder whether in, if, if it's uh, known at United Arab Emirates or has anybody seen a vegetable? Uh, that's okra right there. So go ahead, please, adventurers, and, ty and type it up. Have you ever seen yeah. have this you ever vegetable? Se uh -huh. hey. Have you ever seen an okra in your life? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a United uh, uh, um, uh, Emirates there. They says yes. It just says yes. We know it's here. So they oh, know that. Oh, right. So you. There's another there's another comment comes from Amani who says in my original language it's called Mamiya. Uh, I, I, I recognize that language is Swahili all the way from East Africa, specifically Tanzania. And um, another one says ladies fingers. Uh, ah. Another one says yes, I have eaten okra stew. Yes, that's from David. And so then, have I. I, yes. I love okra, okra stew. The, and comment, what... the comments coming up. Let me just read a few more and then you can say, it uh -huh. says, my, my parents and me love okra. My mom cooked, that's from patients, and my mom cooks okra soup. That's from Hugo and Derek. We eat it in Nigeria. Uh, and then a man just commented there, I have it with the Ugali. And this is just taking me back to Tanzania. So go ahead. Lovely, jubbly. Yes, I do love okra myself. What's what's it called again? Uh, on, on another term, mamia. Bamia. That's in Swahili. Called bamia. 
right. Yeah. Okay. So that's and, and lady fingers. That is interesting. It just look kind of like lady fingers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting with all the cultural experience of okra. I thought I, I was the only one who knew okra, but that's very good coming from you adventurers. I, I love that. Okay, let's move, move on to our next slide. Okay, people have been preserving food for hundreds of years, particularly in Bible lands. It was important for their survival. The weather was generally hot for most of the year and they could not store food in a refrigerator or the fridge, we call it here in the UK. The first preserved food was probably dates. Okay, so has anybody seen dates? I'm sure it'll be popular again in UAE. Well, as people commented, and uh, and I'll read the previous comments that we missed out, is from Malaysian food, we call them in some from Zimbabwe as well. And yes, the comments come straight from UAE. Our family loves it. Dates are oh. very famous here there. Yes, I do love dates and I love to mix it with my desserts and things. So yes, that's one of the preservation that that's that, you know, in the time of Jesus, uh, uh, that's part of the fruit uh, preservation. So it is indeed a form of preserving uh, dates back in the thousands of years. A classic example also as well is preserving grapes. As Jewish families began to move out of desert areas, the way they preserved food had changed. So yes, they were preserving grapes as well. And when the Jews went north into the cold places, Preserving food became a life-saving technique. It is going to be very difficult to get through winter unless you preserve fruits in jam or root vegetables, your cucumbers, carrots, beets, pickled or jam. So that's how they preserve their food in the olden times. Now then, let's go back to our tin. Okay, the next question is, how was tin used in Bible times? Any comments, adventurers? So the question is, how was tin used in Bible times? So as we're waiting for people to type to Pastor Dion, if there's any comments we've missed from Facebook, because we're going along here on, on the Zoom. So let's let's hear the comments that relating to okra and related to anything that we've missed. Uh, yes, there. when it comes to okra, uh, we, we had a few comments. Uh, um, uh, Market said it's very common in Africa uh, when it comes to food. Uh, uh, Amuta said, uh, we love okra here. Uh, Amut also said, uh, "Lady fingers for okra as well is known as the as the title name of the okra." So, so definitely, definitely going well. Uh, again, a uh, question at the moment is, how was tin used during Jesus' time? Let's hear, guys. If you yeah. don't know, you just say, "I don't know," and we'll move on, and we'll find out the answer from our presenter. Uh, yes, it would be interesting to have uh, some comments on that, adventurers. Uh, it seems to me that there is no answer coming. So maybe you go ahead and let's yes, do that. Yes, okay. Now then, this is the information I gathered from Smith's Bible Dictionary. Actually, it goes as far as the Bible. In Numbers chapter 31, verse 22, tin was found in the city of Midian. The city of Tyre had markets where tin was sold, as mentioned in Ezekiel 27, verse 12. Tin was also used as plummets, as recorded in Zechariah 4, verse 10. Okay, there are three countries known to contain tin. Spain, Portugal, and England, mainly Cornwall and Devonshire. Okay, the tin found in biblical countries most likely came from Britain. Easton's Bible Dictionary suggests the people of Tyre and Sidon seem to get their supplies of tin from the British Isles. So British Isles and Britain was mentioned quite a few times whereby they actually uh, keep um, tin. In Ezekiel 27 verse 12, it is said to have been brought from Tarshish. That's very difficult to pronounce. Sorry, adventurers. Tin was also mentioned in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25, when the people of Israel were reminded about the results of their sin. Webster's revised unabridged dictionary explains, tin is a malleable substance at ordinary temperatures, but brittle when heated. 
Tin foil is used to coat iron in order to protect it from rusting. Tin compounds are identified as tannous or stannic. The symbol for that, uh, if there are adventurers who'd like to be scientists, it's SN, stannum. Okay, I think um, Sam is uh, a candidate for being a scientist, if I'm not mistaken, from South Shields. So that's the symbol, SN Stanum. Okay, thin plates of iron covered with tin, and it's a tin plate. It can be money in olden times, and it's used to cover with tin or tinned iron or to overlay with tin foil. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia outlines Tin is mentioned with brass, iron, and lead in Numbers 31, verse 22, and Ezekiel 22, verses 18 and 20. Ezekiel mentions tin along with silver, iron, and lead as being imported into Tyre from Tarshish. Okay, now, adventurers, it's time to wake up. To those yeah. who are asleep, you need to wake up, okay? It's time to participate, okay? Yeah. Please have your Bible with you, as I will need you to read one out of the five Bible verses where tin or alloy is mentioned in the Bible, okay? Listen to this adventurer. The adventurer who is first to read the Bible verse will receive two pounds. Not today, because it's Sabbath day, okay? You will receive two pounds. I'll tell you why, okay? Again, like I said, not today, because it's Sabbath day. This two pounds will be towards your tin can food donation, which is your E award requirement. Okay? okay. If you win today, please ask your adventure leader to contact me tomorrow to claim your prize. Okay? So I'll give you time to get your Bibles, adventurers. All right? So yeah, get your adventures. Bibles ready. Shall I give five seconds and we're ready? I'm sure you have your Bibles. Yes. Yeah. Yes? yes. Are you ready for your two pounds? Not today. Tomorrow. After Sabbath. Okay? So, five seconds. I will start. Okay? At the count of five, four, three, two, one. Okay. I'm expecting that you all have your Bibles with you. I need to hear the adventure is quick enough to read the Bible verse. Okay, so I don't know how to do this, uh, Master Guide Koto. Will you help me out? Because I need to know who is the first adventurer who will read out the Bible verse. Are we ready, adventurers? Yes. Okay, okay Brilliant. So that means we'll take us off for those adventurers who are taking part on the Zoom and the box. Uh, just go ahead and type uh, as you go along when you're on Facebook or you watch on the other platform. All okay, right. Let's so go. Can I can I seek the help Yay! of our uh, Master Guide Koto and Pastor Dian to tell me who was the first to read it? So then I will give two pounds to that adventurer. Yes? Okay. By tomorrow. Okay? The first one. Are you ready? Number yes. chapter 31, verse 22. Read it, it out. Nice and loud. Numbers <laughs> chapter 31, verse 22. <laughs> 31 verse what? Chapter 31, 31, verse 22, 2, 2. Yes. Okay. Gold, silver, silver, bronze, gold. iron tin, lead. Okay, it's not Annabelle, brother, uh, brother Koto. Oh, okay, okay, we, we'll go to, that was, that was a, a little bit too cold, but we will go to, I think Alex um, was, I found the, it. was the first one to find out those one try to read it there. So that's the Alex Jakes, if I can go with that one. How's this? Read, read, read. Um, okay. Gold, silver, I... bronze, iron, tin, lead. Okay, right. I'll only give the prize to the one who actually read it first. And um, the one who will decide for it is either Brother Koto or Pastor Dion. Who was it, um, Brother Koto? Did you mention somebody who was the first one? I, I, I mentioned Alex's and Jake's. I think they were the first one uh, to get to try to start. Okay. To so, 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 yes. Alex, please, so can you tell your adventurer leader to contact me after the presentation and I will send your prize tomorrow? Okay, brother, uh, sister, and brother Koto, you will donate it to brother Koto and you can decide to which club he wants to give it because 
We are in UAE, so we donated to Brother Koto, and he can decide to which club he wants to give it. For, for following very, very close. This was a very, very close. I think Amani and um, Chris Paul, they were very close to read. It's almost insert. But uh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. But I think you should have allowed Sister Rona to send it all the way to UAE. <laughs> Okay, so I believe it's Alex then, uh, it's decided. So please contact your adventure leader. I will send your prize tomorrow. Also, okay, uh, just, uh, yeah. uh, just to, uh, to make it easy, if it's possible, just direct message uh, um, uh, Rona or Koto with your address. So not everybody has to see it, uh, so they can be sent. So ju just send just a direct, direct message to them, yeah? Yeah, I don't mind at all, just contact me, okay? Or, or whoever, right? Next one. Okay, so that was the first one. Yes, uh, and it, it's red. So, okay, the next one. Are you ready for the next one? Okay. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. Again, mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. Yeah. Turn your box. Yeah. I will turn my hand against you and thoroughly purge away your dross and oh. take away all your alone. Brilliant. Okay. So, a uh, brother Koto, who was the first one? That was, I think, very clear. That was Bella from South Shore. Oh, Congratulations, <laughs> Belle. You need to tell your dad to message me for your two pounds. Okay. Right. So that's Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. Very well read. I'm just showing it on the screen. Okay. Are we ready for the num um, verse number three? Adventurers? Yeah. Right. Here it is. It's is <laughs> chapter 22, verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 18. We're just waiting for the offline. The people of Israel come to us. All of them are caught in iron and lead left inside a furnace. Okay. Who was that, uh, Master Guide Koto? That was Denzel, Denzel N. Marvelous. Denzel, please uh, contact me privately or you can ask your adventure leader to contact me for your prize. Thank Brilliant. You. Okay. So now we'll go on to, oopsie daisies, <laughs> right? We'll go on to the next one. Are we ready? Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 22. And they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it to melt it. So I will gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Brilliant, brilliant. Brother Kota, who is that? That was David Salfo. David Salfo. Brilliant, David. Please make sure your adventure leader or yourself will contact me privately for your for your two pounds prize uh, tomorrow, please, not today. <laughs> Marvelous. Okay, now this is the last verse. Adventurer, are you still awake? This is the last verse where tin is actually mentioned. Okay, are we ready? Okay, so. Oh, I think that was the last one. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> that was seemed to be the same verse. That was a bit of a boo boo. Sorry about that. Let's move on. Adventures, thank you so much for that participation. There is more fun to come. Okay, so let's move on to our next one. Now, the next requirement is make a telephone or stilts using tin cans as shown on the screen right you have to make a telephone or stilts with tin cans make sure that you are supervised by your parent so that you are safe and make sure that you don't get any cuts 
you know, whilst you're doing it, and I'm sure an adult or your parent will be able to help you. So, so that's one example. That's a stilt made of tin cans, okay? And the next example is your telephone, okay? I've got one here, which was which was willingly made by my husband, thanks to Master Guide Clint Imbalia for making those for me. And he made sure that he's safe. Okay, so can I ask um, my son here who could, I'll just show you how these things are used. This is an example of a telephone, um, telephone tin can. Okay, if you can hold out on the other end, right? So hold it on your ear. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Right, okay, so that's an example of the tin can a telephone okay is it possible think, yeah is it possible just so, to encourage everybody who decides to make the telephone that you take a picture of yourself and send us to my email and i'll publish it this coming wednesday so on wednesdays we publish these photos and my email is dan at adventist.com so i will just post it in a chat section lovely thank you so much pastor dian okay so that's that's one. And then I think the stilts were actually be similar to this as well. Yeah. Okay. I think there's a, it, this is uh, the uh, summary of how to make your telephone tin can stilts and your, 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 yes, your telephone and your stilts tin cans. So it says poke a small hole in the bottom of two empty and clean cans. Put one end of the long string into each can and and on the end and tie a knot. Stretch the string tight and then talk. One person will talk on the other person listens to create a telephone, which is what I've showed you. So God communicates with us like the telephone. We cannot see him, but he is always ready to listen and help us to make stilts. You poke a small hole on the two sides of the top of the two cans. Tie a string to each can to, to create stilts. And for stilt safety, use cans no smaller than a 20 ounces and always wear shoes. And in the Bible, it says, and walk in love. That's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. Okay, moving on. Right, another requirement of our Adventurer E Award is you must submit three three tin cans of food to your adventurer leader. This will be donated to the food bank following the government, government guidelines on lockdown. So as I've said earlier, your price of two pounds for your, will go towards your tin can food donation. But make sure that you ask your adventure leader on how to donate it, because at the moment we have to follow government guidelines on lockdown. So I've got an example on the screen. I've got a live example as well of my food donation. I've got, I think, a vegetable soup and tin can. I've got a beans. Yes. And then I've got spaghetti okay right so that's just an example you can use and there's slow there's a few more there on the screen so that's another requirement okay we're getting there adventurers so just hang fire i'm not going to hold you too long okay, okay see, see, uh, MG yeah. Lord, and just say as an encouragement for adventurers so just go ahead and type some of other examples that you will be able to uh, donate so type it up there was a spaghetti there there was a tomato i think and beans just think of any, any idea and just type them on the chat. Go ahead, Sister Lo. Right, lovely. Uh -huh. So we move on. We are actually now moving on to the last requirement of our Tin Can Fun Adventurer Award. Okay, is that your reactions, adventurers? Are you, are you so happy that we're going to end soon? Okay, well, at least I am. Right. Okay, I'm just going to move a little uh, this table here because we're going to be on our demo mode. So are you still awake, adventurers? Are you with me? Yes, I hope so. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. I heard yes. Marvelous. Yes. Now let us, let us play the mystery can fun game. Okay, I'm going to show you one example of a mystery 
can fun game. Now you have to give your full attention as this is the last requirement of your e-award. You can try this at home or you can create your own tin can fun game. Okay? Now, we need the following items. Like I said, this is just an example. You can search for your own fun, mystery fun game, tin, tin can fun game. The first, first uh, item on the list is you need tin cans of food labels removed, at least, at least six of them, right? There. Okay, this is a tin can of food, okay? where food labels are removed, at least six of them, okay? And you have to vary them. For example, you want fruit on it, vegetables or etc. okay? Then the next one that you will need is blindfolds, okay? Them, all right? You need them, okay? And the next one is a two, at least two scarves, okay? So that's one, that's two, okay? Are we ready for the game? If you forgot about those things, you can message me. I'll tell you later. Right, so please watch and pay attention. Okay, right, I need my um, participants. Master Guide Clint, can you move over there? And uh, Josh, can you move over here? Okay, right. I think you need to like be on the, yeah. Right, so first you have to blindfold your participants, okay? You're gonna help me out. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. no cheating. You need to close your eyes. <laughs> okay, can you not see? No. Okay, I hope uh not. Right, and you? Yeah, make sure, yeah, can you see? No. Definitely not, okay, that's brilliant. It, it, right, it. and next one is you have to cover their nose. They can breathe through their mouth, remember, okay? They're still safe, they can breathe through their mouth. Like when you're going swimming, you can breathe through your mouth. So I need to make sure, is, is your nose covered, yes? Yes. Master Guide Clint? Yes. Uh, ma ma Master Guide Lorna, just to, to, to clarify there, ad adventures is supposed to keep their eyes open so that they can see how you demonstrate this? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, please, adventures, keep your eyes open so that you can keep see what is, what is happening. Yeah, keep year. away. Keep, keep your away. eyes open. Yes, keep your okay. eyes open. Right. So, yeah, you can breathe through your nose just for the whole process. And um, where's your nose, dear? There it is. Okay. Is your nose covered? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Right. So after that, what you will do is you will let them have a taste of what you have prepared here without the labels. Have a taste one spoonful each, and then you will make them guess what's inside the can. Okay? Right. So you need your your spoon, okay? Right, so I'm gonna let Master Guide Clint have one spoonful first. Look at the adventurers, don't tell them what it is, okay? Here, right. Me, I cannot see. Okay, hang on a minute. <laughs> Where's your mouth? <laughs> it's a bit big, you going to have to open wide. Okay, you have to chew it and don't say anything. Don't say anything, okay? Right, and then on the other participant as well. Remember, adventurers, you can have as many participants as you want, as long as you have, as long as you have the resources. Okay, open your mouth, big one, big one. Okay, right. Chew and swallow, and then what you say, then adventurers, is at the count of three, they have to guess what they have just had. Are we ready, adventurers? At the count of three. Let's go, adventurers. Three, two, one. Guess. It's a fruit. 
Uh, okay. It's a sweet fruit. Okay. <laughs> Tasty, right, but I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows from the uh, participants. Oh dear, adventurers! What was the answer? Melon. Peach. Is it a melon? No, Who said peach? peach? Who said peach? That that's was... that's Alex. <laughs> uh, Alex and Jake's said peaches. Brilliant! Now they guessed right. it right. Well, Congratulations! I said okay. Melon. So this participants these participants are no good they don't know what they had okay right so next one next one okay right so this is just part of the game make sure adventurers you choose what you like for them to have try not to give them something that's you know <laughs> something that that you're able to eat okay right so again this is the next one Okay, open your mouth wide. Yeah. Okay, right. And then the other one. Yeah. I hope I'm not running out of time, Brother Koto. I'm being conscious. You, uh, you've got a very uh, a two minutes or so. If okay, we right then. Yeah. We'll finish this off. Okay. Oopsie daisies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, open your mouth. Right, okay, at the count of three, you tell me what you had. Three, two, one. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Spaghetti. What did you have? I think it's uh, like noodles, spaghetti. Okay, right. <laughs> well, this time Josh won. It's spaghetti. Okay, so that's that for the fun game because we don't have much time. I'm going to proceed to just the finishing touches. Adventurers, thank you. I hope you were still in tune on that one. So I'm going to try and screen share again, I think. Oops, do I still know how to do that? Because <laughs> we're nearly done. OK, I'm just going to share a few things, and then we are going to wrap this up. Um, OK, bear with me, because I'm not very good in screen sharing. Um, right. OK, thank you so much, participants, for joining. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to, okay, can yep. you see? Um, yep, you're yeah, there. Adventures. Right. Okay, so that on the screen is the instruction for the game. So I think you've seen how it's done. So you'll be able to do it yourself. That is one of your requirements, okay? Moving on to the next one. When you're at home, there are other fun stuff that you could do. Uh, this is not exactly a requirement, but it's just something fun that you, if you would like to use out of a tin can, okay? So these are examples. If you want me to uh, send you how to make it as shown on the screen, just let me know. You can private message me. I'll send you it, okay? So these are just a couple of examples that you can try at home, okay? Those are made of tin cans, okay? Just to make it more fun, all right? So those, that's it. Okay, adventurers, thank you so much for staying with me. I appreciate all your support and all your participation. That concludes our uh, e-award this afternoon for Tin Can Fun. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, you everyone. Very, thank you.